雪ながら夕べにかすむカレーかな In Shogun Episode 9, Lady Mariko shares a portion of an original heiku with Achibo when they reunite. In the penultimate episode of Shogun, Mariko took full control of the story, with the obvious goal of communicating with Lord Ishido and Achiba in Osaka. After being inexplicably sent to Osaka at the Ibushi Gate in Blackthorn, Mariko informs Lord Ishido and Achiba that she has been given the command to immediately return to Lord Toranaga in Edo. She threatens to perform seppuku for disobeying Toranaga's orders when she encounters resistance from Ishido's men. Shogun episode 9 was supposed to depict the events of Toranaga's army's siege of Osaka with troops from Edo, based on the title Crimson Sky. Toranaga seems to have finally gained the element of surprise on his side after suffering multiple significant losses in the most recent episodes of Shogun. After being effectively held captive in Osaka by Lord Ishido, Lady Mariko fulfilled her duty to Toranaga and overthrew his conceit. Mariko also got to see her old friend Ochiba again. And the reunion resulted in one of the most impactful character exchanges in the entire series. Before the unexpected turn of events in Shogun Episode 9, Mariko begins writing an impromptu poem in response to an invitation from Ochiba to participate in an Osaka poetry competition. Ochiba observes that Mariko was consistently the standout student in her class as a child, demonstrating her continued regard and admiration for her former buddy. Mariko says she won't be able to stay in Osaka. Long enough to compete in the poetry competition. And she then reads the opening line of her poem. The poetry competition will continue the line, which begins While the snow remains veiled in the haze of cold evening, a leafless branch. Ishido appears sincere in his admiration, while Ochiba quietly observes the precise words that Mariko chooses in the first line of her poem. Mariko's statements were obviously meant to be directed toward Ochiba, given that Ochiba's name literally translates to fallen leaves. In addition, Mariko's poetry makes reference to the flashbacks of her early life that followed her father's big treachery, in which he killed Ochiba's father and therefore permanently embarrassed Mariko's family. The so remains alludes to the ice from that incident that Mariko still has in her body. If Ochiba represents fallen leaves, Mariko represents the leafless branch, signifying its organic separation over time. The poem Leafless Branch in Shogun seems to have been composed especially for the show. And is not reminiscent of anything you might find elsewhere. As Fallen Leaves, in reference to Ochiba, whose name evokes the lovely and picturesque season of autumn, it serves as the ideal cryptic warning from Mariko to Ochiba. Mariko may be attempting, without explicitly stating it in front of Ishido, to warn Ochiba of the winter like death that is to come through Toranaga's aspirations to become shogun. This is indicated by her references to a leafless branch in winter. If she is to be interpreted as the dead, leafless branch she describes, then she may also be hinting at her own demise in the incident. Yabushige, who doesn't seem to possess any poetic sensibilities at all, critiques Mareko's poetry due to its thematic inconsistency with the season. As it's springtime in Japan, Yabushige criticizes Mareko's poetry for utilizing winter related motifs and symbols. He generally gripes about how strange he thinks it is that the poetry does not correspond with the season they are in. Apart from pointing out that the poem is out of place, it is a winter poem delivered in the spring. Yabushige has no issues with the poem itself. Yabushige quickly mocks Mareko's poem for being out of season, demonstrating his obvious inability to understand its meaning to Ochiba. Although Yabushige is undoubtedly dishonest, it appears that he lacks insight or curiosity regarding the fact that Mariko's poetry is mostly about winter, even though it is spring. Nobody stops to consider the significance of that observation, not even Ishido, and nobody else considers it farther than Ochiba. Mariko's poems serve as a kind of cryptic foreshadowing of what was to happen in Shogun, starting with her untimely death at the end of Episode 